My name's Bart Casey, and I want to tell you about a new book I've written called The Double Life of Lawrence Oliphant. It's about a rather eccentric Victorian gentleman who began life in a rather normal way, but then went off in a completely different direction. And in that sense, you might say he lived a double life. In his first life, Lawrence was a true son of the British Empire, born into a well-connected Scottish family in 1829. He grew up in the Cape Colony at the southern tip of Africa, and then in Ceylon, where his father was Chief Justice. His uncle was the chairman of the British East India Company, and important visitors were always coming ashore to visit during the long voyages back and forth to India. He was a bright boy with gumption, and he became well-known and well-liked among the highest levels of the British elite. Here he is at about age 25, just around the time he began traveling to little-known places like Nepal and the Crimea and writing up reports of his adventures. His writing was a great success, and he turned more serious, covering battlefield action as a war correspondent for the Times of London. Next, he tried diplomacy, writing up best-selling eyewitness reports on missions to the Americas and the opening up of China and Japan. But by age 36, although he was a successful author, minor celebrity, and member of parliament, he was overcome by feelings that he was acting in an empty charade. Something serious was missing, and his first life was coming to a close. From his early childhood, Lawrence's parents worked hard to make him thoughtful about his spiritual life as a Christian, with time for morning prayers and moral reflection set aside every day. But the established religions all seem pointless to him now in a lunatic world where men slaughtered each other on battlefields. Where was this loving God, the Father who made man in his image and promised heavenly salvation? Was he hiding? Could Lawrence find him, just as he sought out adventure in earthly places like Nepal? Then he crossed paths with a charismatic prophet from America, Thomas Lake Harris, and his second life began. Harris promised great things were about to happen. The second coming of Christ would soon begin. After that would come a new era when spirits would return to earth and live in harmony with the chosen. Somehow all that just seemed to be the next plausible adventure to Lawrence, and incredibly he turned over his fortune to Harris and joined his new commune in America. There by day, Lawrence worked as a laborer making fine wine, but at night, he immersed himself in Harris's strange mystical and sexual practices, making long, intimate visits to the spirit world. You can read more about all those shenanigans in the book. Finally, after 14 years, Lawrence and his wife Alice broke with Harris, who they thought had become a false prophet, obsessed with power and money. They forced Harris to return their money and then set off on their final chapter, helping to establish a homeland in Palestine for the thousands of Jews fleeing from persecution in Russia and Eastern Europe. Indeed, the elephants are still remembered in Israel today as two of the earliest Zionist pioneers, although they always remain somewhat wacky Christians with their own direct access to angels in heaven. Here's a picture of their house in Haifa at the foot of Mount Carmel. Well, that's a bare bones summary of Lawrence's double life. I left out his friendship with Queen Victoria, his fearless reporting on the siege of Paris during the Franco-Prussian War, and his last books with their text dictated from heaven by his deceased wife, Alice but all of those are in the book for your future reading pleasure. Was Lawrence crazy for thinking that there was an actual deity and other celestial spirits in a parallel universe that could save him? Did that make him any crazier than the people who built all the churches, cathedrals, mosques, and temples all over the planet so they could pray to their own chosen spirits? Or are we the odd ones who have given up on any spiritual quest and treat the old religions of the past as fairy tales that we can fall back on occasionally as we glide through this digital age. 
Anyway, I hope you'll take the time to read and enjoy Lawrence's strange and colorful story. Perhaps share it with friends and then make your own conclusions. If you do, I think you'll agree, it is quite a story.